In the show Fallout, it is set 219 years after the first bombs dropped. The bombs dropped around the early 60s. Nuclear war broke out, and, you know, it, it doesn't go well when nuclear bombs drop. You get the idea. We get introduced to three characters, and the first one we'll talk about is Lucy. She lives in Vault 33. Around this time, a bunch of vaults were built for basically the rich people to survive. And those vaults don't get opened. So you have communities living underground, kind of oblivious to what's going on up top, which they call the wasteland. And for Lucy, she's one of those people. She's grown up her entire life in the vault. Her extracurricular activities are great. She lives with her father, who's an overseer, basically the mayor of Vault 33. His name is Hank, and also her little brother, Norm. She's a really important figure in the vault. The only thing missing is a husband. And when you're living in close quarters, options are pretty slim. I mean, you've got your cousins. and While it's not frowned upon to mess around with them, it is frowned upon to marry them. And for Lucy, she just hasn't found a match. So when this happens, something occurs called the triennial trade with Vault 32 or Vault 31. They're all kind of connected in a triangle. And what this is, is an arranged marriage. She's going to meet somebody she's never met before. She's going to marry them and hopefully live happily ever after. This actually happened to her father. He had never met Lucy's mother before they ended up getting married, but he fell madly in love with her. Lucy makes her pitch on why she should be chosen for this in front of the council, and they approve it. And there's no time to waste. There's no real planning. Her best friend Stephanie helps her with this. And Stephanie's just excited because they get to grow old and raise their kids together. A couple hours later, with Lucy's dress on and makeup done, she gets ready to meet her husband. The connecting vault door opens, and they get introduced to the people of Vault 32. Now recently, Vault 32 did have a tragedy. Their overseer passed away. The new overseer, Lee Moldaver, is the one to greet Hank, Lucy, and the rest of the members of Vault 33. This is basically going to be a trade-off. Vault 32 is giving Vault 33 a guy to pair with Lucy, and in turn... Vault 33 is giving Vault 32 supplies. And when it comes time for Lucy to meet her future husband, she gets extra excited because his name is Monty, and folks, he's a snack. Oh, yeah. And shortly after meeting, they get married, and then both vaults have a big party together in Vault 33. Although, Monty isn't much for words. After a little bit of dancing, a little bit of eating, Monty asks her, hey, can you show me to where I'm going to be living the rest of my life? And Lucy's more than happy to do that, and shortly after the door closes, Monty's clothes comes off, Lucy's clothes comes off, and they consummate that thing. And it's hot and spicy. But as those two are banging each other's brains out, Norm gets a little curious. The party's still raging on, but he starts walking around the vault, and the door to Vault 32 is still open. And as he walks further inside, he notices that all their crops are dead, but that's not the only thing that's dead. There are people that are dead in the vault. The people that are out in Vault 33 representing as Vault 32, they're not quite right. And a short time later, Lucy gets tipped off to this when she hears screaming. She then starts quickly noticing some oddities with Monty, so she throws on her Pip-Boy, which is a Vault Tech sort of smartphone. That's the best way I can describe it. It's their version. It connects to your wrist. It does a lot of things. And one of those things is alerting you to if there's radiation around. And when Lucy gets close to Monty, he's radiating with radiation. It tips off Lucy the fact that Monty is not from Vault 33. He's from up top, which means he's a raider. When Monty's discovered, he attacks Lucy. And he does let her know that the last couple hours have been the best day of his life. But unfortunately, she's got to go because the jig's up. Lucy, however, fights Monty off because she is well-trained. And she is able to kill him, although it comes at a price. She gets stabbed in the process, so she's got to grab a stim pack, which heals her up and numbs the pain. As she slowly makes her way out of her quarters, she notices that her entire vault is under attack by these raiders. This was all planned out by Lee Moldover. And Vault 33 is putting up a fight, but it's difficult. They didn't see this coming. And by the end of it, it puts Overseer Hank in a tough bind because he's got six of his people as hostages. And all it's going to take is Lee to give the order for her men to shoot him. That's when Overseer Hank says, I'm pretty sure I know who you are. And Lee says, everybody knows who I am. But do they know who they are? They're the product of one of life's tricky little choices. 
So I'm going to offer you a choice. Them or Lucy. Hank decides to lock Lucy up so that she'll be safe because Lee has set up detonation devices. So Hank needs to make sure that his daughter doesn't blow up. Lee's men then attack Hank and start taking him prisoner. And then Lee walks over to the window of the room where Lucy's being held and just says, you look like your mother, and then walks off. Lucy doesn't have many memories of her mom, so that's a little telling. In doing all of this, though, Hank did save everybody. Because while Lee does trigger the detonation device, six of the people get to hide and Lucy is safe. But at the end, Vault 33 has a lot of cleanup to do. They've also got a few prisoners, but the only thing that Lucy and Norm care about is where their dad is. Lucy especially wants to go up top to the surface and try to look for him, but the council won't allow it. And Norm says, they're not going to allow it, Lucy. They don't want to find dad. If they did, they wouldn't get a chance to be in charge. And sadly, Lucy knows that's correct, so she's going to take it upon herself. She arms up and heads to the vault door. She instructs her cousin Chet, who's got a major thing for Lucy, to open it up. And this is a big no-no. But Chet and Norm do it. They say their goodbyes to Lucy. And even though the vault does open and Lucy leaves, they're caught. They're going to have to answer for that. Lucy, though, is finally at the top in the wasteland. And she's marveling at the views. She's never seen anything like it. Now, some of the protectors of the wasteland are the Brotherhood of Steel. And that's when you get introduced to Maximus. Maximus has dreamed about being a member of the Brotherhood since he was a little boy. He was saved by a member of the Brotherhoods, and thus he wanted to be like him. He wanted to save people, protect them. So he enlisted. Unfortunately for Maximus, he really only has one friend, Dane. Everybody else kind of bullies him and picks on him. He's not the best enlistee. Yet he still has his eyes on the prize, being a member. Right now he's just an aspirant, which is a trainee. And what the Brotherhood does isn't just protecting those in the wasteland. They also preserve history. They look for pre-war tech, most of it from a company called Vault Tech, and they either restore it, keep it, preserve it, you name it. Now, a lot of it is just simple stuff that we as individuals today recognize, like toasters and circuit boards and stuff like that. Nothing out of the ordinary. But for these people who've been living without it for 219 years, that kind of tech is big, and they search it out. They also go on missions, and they get a badass suit of armor to do it. One particular day, an airship drops down, and Maximus finds out that they're promoting some of the aspirins, and one of those is going to be Dane. Normally, he probably would be happy for his friend, but he's not, and it's because Dane was one of many to get chosen, which means that Maximus was looked over. And because of that, he's pissed off. Although, the next morning, the entire barracks are woken up by Dane screaming. Because somebody snuck a razor blade into Dane's boot, and when Dane put it on, it sliced up their leg real, real good. There's only a certain number of people that could have done it, and Maximus, being close with Dane and being passed over, is looked at as a potential culprit. He's brought in front of Elder Quintus and accused of doing these crimes, but he is adamant that he had nothing to do with it. And then he finds out that he's actually taking Dane's spot, which is exciting. Now, he's not going to get a suit of armor, He's going to be accompanying one of the members of the Brotherhood of Steel. But he's well on his way to becoming a full-fledged member. This is a promotion. And the reason that they needed new people is because they have a big, big mission. It comes from the highest clerics. Elder Quintus tells everybody that there is a denizen of the Enclave has escaped. And when he escaped, he did so with an object that has profound potential to harm the nation. But that same item could also save the nation. Each knight is going to search a section of the wasteland and try to find the target. They're given a sketch of what the guy looks like and also his dog. And then they're sent on their way to try to find the target. But they aren't the only ones who are looking for this target. No, there's been a bounty put on this guy's head throughout the wasteland. And there's a ghoul who's after it. He's been alive since the bombs dropped. He's a former movie and TV star named Cooper Howard. Now he just goes by the ghoul. Because when the bombs drop, it affected his body. And he's not a feral ghoul, but he's dangerous. And he, just like the Brotherhood, wants to cash in on that bounty and find the target. 
Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.